Hi everyone, I'm Luca and in this section I'll cover the crucial topic of machine learning simulation in self-driving. So without any further hesitation, let's dive in. This is today's agenda. I'll start by telling you what simulation is and why we need it. Then I'll give you a broad overview of the different approaches that have been explored by the simulation community and what problems still remain open. And last but not least, I'll show you how you can train and test your own machine learning simulator in our open source repo L5 kit. But first, let me start by telling you what the usual way of testing a self-driving vehicle is and why this is related to simulation. After a new model or feature has been developed, we request a road testing in the real world. A safety driver is always in the car and can take control of it before things go sour. We retrieve the log of this session and we evaluate them to understand if our new feature is making up progress in the right direction. However, you may have already spotted a couple of issues with this approach. First, road testing is really, really expensive, and it's not only a matter of money, it's also the time involved to go from shipping the feature to actually be on the road, as it includes getting the required permission, setting up the vehicle, and contacting the safety driver. This makes road testing almost impossible to scale over a certain volume of feature to test. Second, all this driving experience is not reproducible. Testing how two models will behave in the exact same situation is just not possible because we can't control the world around us to reproduce the situation over and over again. So then we come to what we call the self-driving vehicles many billion question. How can we test our model performance offline? Because if we know this, we can test hundreds or thousands of features in a very short time and get closer to the correct solution much faster. We strongly believe that simulation is the answer, so let me tell you more about it. We define simulation as an offline system able to reproduce the behavior of one or more agents in the real world with high fidelity. Uh, simulation is usually an iterative process where the agent takes an action and interacts with the simulator. As an effect of this, the state of the simulation changes and the agent can access this knowledge to take the next action. And because the simulator is not the real world, we have a couple of pretty nice advantages. First, we can test the exact same state for as many times as we want. Each time we can take a different action and see how the simulation reacts to that. Also, because this is a computational system, we can launch many simulations at the same time. The limit is not time anymore, but computation, and we can increase it by, just by allocating more resources. Second, we can identify issues even before they occur in the real world. And this is really important in the early stage of development, where deploying directly in the real world will give us a very poor signal as performance still needs to be tuned. Talking more concretely about simulation in self-driving, let me tell you how a self-driving car sees the world around while operating. The SDV has access to its own position, shown here as a red box. We also use semantic map information, so it knows the different lanes of the road, which are shown in grey, or the location of crosswalk, shown in yellow. The SDV can access dynamic map information, such as the traffic light color at an intersection. You see an example of it here, where the traffic light switches from red to green at the beginning of the video. The SDD also senses other agents of the road, shown here as the blue boxes. It sees their movement, and at the same time, he has to take decision about what to do next. And he can see the reaction of other agents to its own behaviors. In this setting, the task of simulation can then be framed as replicating what the SDD would experience in the real world, and checking whether its decisions are correct. And in practice, this requires simulating all other agents of interest. Next, I'll tell you about the different way we can perform this simulation. The trivial way to do simulation is what we call log replay. The name comes from the fact that we are replaying the offline data of the episode for all the agents. This is exactly the same as not simulating agents at all. Let me show you an example. What you see here is a previous recorded episode of the self-driving vehicle driving in the real world. This comes from the raw data collected during our road testing. What we can do now is to plug the planner in while keeping all other agents as they were in the log and just replay them. In this case, there is little difference between what the planner is doing and what the self-driving car did in the log. So everything looks pretty nice. However, this may not always be the case. This approach has in fact a huge and well-known issue. The issue is that the agent have no brain at all and they will just follow the path written in the data. So that if the self-driving car is lower or completely stop, like in this example, the agent behind will not slow down and will eventually run over it. This is why this simulation is usually referred to as non-reactive. So what can we do to make this simulation a little bit better? Well, we can try to embed some human knowledge in the equation. After all, humans know how to drive, 
most of them at least. We can come up with a set of rules to try and cover all the possible scenarios our agent may encounter, and we can code them in a model that will drive them around. This is what you can expect to find in a traditional computer simulator. Sumo is an example of such simulators. It's open source and it's supported by a large number of public and private organizations. Sumo is specifically designed for simulation with a high number of agents and is mostly used for planning and prediction tasks. You can see an example here where a crowded intersection is modeled. This includes multiple lanes with traffic light information and crosswalks. Some of you may know Carla. Carla is a computer simulator where almost everything related to self-driving can be simulated, from raw sensor to complex agent behaviors. From this last part, Carla employs a set of rules to handle collision, interaction with traffic lights, and the final destination of the agent. This is nice and works well in a lot of scenarios, but it also has its own cons. In particular, it's bounded by the number of rules encoded in the agent behavior. This number can be increased, but it scales very poorly as it requires a human in the loop. Ideally, we want something at scale with data instead, and that's where machine learning simulation comes in. When we say machine learning simulation, we mean a system that can learn directly from data, with little or no need for human knowledge, except for when the model was designed. This system usually leverages a lot of computational power to learn how to perform the task, and in this case the task is driving an agent. These systems are great because they scale with something that is almost unbounded, namely data. So the more data we feed, the better we can expect the system to get. There is a lot of research going on using these approaches, so let me give you some noteworthy examples. The first system I want to talk about is called Vibe. Vibe is a deep learning system which translates real-world data into a simulated episode inside the Unity game engine. Then it employs an inverse reinforcement learning algorithm called Gale to learn a policy to control a single agent in this simulation. The simulated trajectory is compared against the real one using an adversarial loss function. Because the environment is created inside Unity, this model is not fully differentiable. You can see a comparison between trajectory generated by Vibe and the annotated one in the bottom left picture. The generated trajectory forms a distribution which is very close to the annotated one. The author of Traffic Sim take a different approach, where the entire scene is modeled jointly and each agent is just a node linked to the others. To model this variable number of agents, the model employs a graph neural network. This allows it to learn how the various agents interact between themselves and to simulate a future where all agent intentions are taken into account. Again, also this approach employs a fully differentiable simulator. The last method I want to tell you about is called SIMNET and has been developed here at LIFT level 5. We made the choice of modeling each agent independently, as it greatly reduced the complexity of the final pipeline. At training time, we employ a simple behavioral cloning loss to learn a machine learning policy from bird-eye view raster. Then, during the simulation, we rasterize a bird-eye view around each agent current position and we control it using the output of the policy. This is an iterative process, as we only use the first predicted position before invoking the policy again, feeding a new raster to it. Simnet is a rather simple approach, but it works remarkably well when enough data is available. We have released the code and checkpoint of Simnet in our repo, and I will give you a short demonstration of how to use them today. Before that, let me tell you a little bit more about the challenges that still remain unsolved in simulation. The first one is representativeness. Ideally, we would like to see a lot of interesting behavior in our simulation, such as lane changes or different speed profiles. However, it's very easy for a machine learning model to converge or even collapse to an average profile, which will fit almost all the data well enough. What we end up with is therefore a very boring simulation where all the cars behave in the same way and no real interaction happens. The second challenge is how we can control this simulation. We may want to test a specific scenario where an agent is required to do, for example, a lane change. Maybe we're interested in evaluating what the planner would do in that situation. However, it's not really trivial to condition a machine learning policy in doing what we want. How to do this in a programmatic and efficient way is still an open problem in the community. But now it's time to get our hands dirty by coding a simple machine learning policy for simulation using our open source repo L5Kit. L5Kit is shipped with a number of IPython notebooks for the various tasks of autonomous driving. Among them, we have two dedicated to training and evaluating a simulation policy. I will go through the most important bits of them, and you can find the full notebooks by following the links provided with the presentation. The first thing you want to do is to load the data. 
we provide high-level abstraction classes that are full compatible with PyTorch dataset. When training a model for simulation, we are not limited to the self-driving car annotations only, but we can instead use all the agent's data from our dataset. This is why I'm loading an agent dataset and not an ego dataset here. The agent dataset iterates over all the agents captured by the perception system and already perform a little bit of filtering to ensure the quality of the training data is reasonable. What comes next is really just a replica of what you saw for planning and prediction. We define a model to predict future position and we iterate over the agent dataset to perform forward and backward. Let's now focus on the evaluation notebook, where you can use your machine learning policy to control all the agents around the self-driving vehicle. The first thing you want to do is to load your policy. You can use the result of your training for this, but we also provide pre-training modules in L5Kit, which were trained on our dataset using a cluster of GPUs. You can also use those ways to fine-tune your model for different applications if you want. Then we define the metrics we are interested in. These metrics are used to evaluate the quality of the simulation and are applied to the self-driving car. You can think of them as a way of evaluating how realistic the simulation is from its point of view. At the end of the day, one of the reasons we are doing this is to be able to better evaluate our planner. For this reason, this notebook also allows you to have a planning model in control of the self-driving car. You can also customize the simulation by specifying what you want to simulate and what you want to be just replayed. Also, you can simulate only a portion of the agents in the scene, filtering them based on distance from the self-driving car. And finally, you can specify how long you want your simulation to be. The further you simulate, the more challenging the task becomes, and there is more room for errors. You are now ready to kick off the simulation. Once it's finished, you can collect the result and do a couple of things. First, you can evaluate the metrics to ensure the quality of the simulation is satisfactory. Second, you can visualize the simulated scene to manually inspect them. Let me start from the first point. This is a result for one of our pre-trained models. As you can see, replacing replayed with simulated agents improves some key metrics, such as the number of rear collisions. As shown earlier, this was a major issue when using log replay agents. Now we can leverage our machine learning simulation to drastically reduce the number of these events. We can also compute metrics for agents by comparing the simulated and the replay trajectories. In this snippet, I'm computing the average displacement error at different time steps into the future by iterating over scenes, steps, and individual agents. You can expand this code by including other metrics already available in L5Kit, or you can also add your own. A feature of machine learning policies is that they can improve just by adding more data during training. Here, I'm plotting the average displacement error from the previous slide for three models, each one trained on a different portion of the whole dataset. As you can see, the error reduces when more data is available. Increasing the size of the dataset from 10 hour to 100 hour reduces the error at 5 seconds by around 50%, and further increasing the size still leads to a lower error. In terms of visualization, you can see here a pre-trained model of three different scenes. All the agents in the scene are now controlled, and they can react to others and to the set driving car properly. Again, these pre-trained weights are available with the notebooks, so you can use them straight away if you want to skip training entirely. That's all on my side. I hope I've convinced you about the importance of, of simulation in the self-driving stack. Many challenges remain open for this task, making it far from being completely solved. Thank you so much for your attention.